All right. Let's see. All right, let's get it. Mic check, mic check. Morning Masters podcast, just made of course. Back with another episode, man. First and foremost, I want to thank all the supporters, listeners, anybody who shared the podcast, listened to the podcast, uh, hit me up about the podcast in the last couple of weeks. Definitely shout out to y'all. Without y'all, I wouldn't be able to do this podcast thing, and I wouldn't have the motivation. So definitely shout out to all the um, listeners, the audience. Uh, I don't know. I don't like calling people fans, but just supporters and people who like to listen to the podcast that uh, give me feedback and listen to it, and then give me. Uh, we have dialogue, and they comment on certain videos and things like that. So definitely shout out to y'all, man. Um, uh, so real quick, uh, the last episode I did, which was a thinking out loud slash thank you episode, it was for a guy that I worked with, um, and he taught me a lot. So shout out to him, definitely. Uh, those are super important to me when I'm doing those episodes because a lot of times, you know, we wait. I think as people, we just wait sometimes to say, some, tell somebody thank you, or we don't do it in real time for whatever reasons. Whether you're going through something, you're beefing, and this is not me and that person's uh energy like we got good energy you know what I'm saying it's nothing like that but I'm saying like sometimes um at least in the culture that I, I live in uh, a lot of times we won't praise somebody in, in real time we'll wait until something good happens for them or we'll wait until something bad happens to them and you know I use I use that uh series of thank you to to do things when one people least expect it two it's been on my mind for a while and I don't want to just have it there and then I'm one of the people that's saying it, uh, you know, when something bad happens or if something good happens and it just seems um, commercial-like, don't seem real. One thing about me and my content, I, I try to be as authentic as possible um, as I can be on here. I also, I'm not going to come on here and say every single thing I've done in my life or, you know, just some, say something retarded or, or oh, I shouldn't use that word, say something silly. Um, but I try to be as authentic to the craft as I possibly can when it comes to the topics so or when it comes to... Uh, talking about people, you know, I'm a people person. So um, when it comes to talking about people and people that I care about, people that care about me, I try to be as, as authentic as possible as I can when I'm on the mic and I'm on camera because I think it's important to to have that. So anything I ever do on here and say on here, is, trust me, it's authentic, whether it's a good thing, a bad thing, whether I'm, I'm coming at somebody, which I've done, I've, I've been known to do, or whether I'm, I'm, I'm big enough somebody, it's always an authentic uh, feeling and reason behind it. So I want to get that out of the way. So shout out to RJ and shout out to anybody who watched that. If you watched it and you liked it, cool. If it wasn't for you, I understand. But those thank yous are super important. It's not about a view. All I needed was one view and I was for him to see it and I was fine. But for y'all that watched it and liked it and shared it, definitely appreciate y'all. Um, those, when I, when I talk about stuff like that and I talk about people like that, I mean it. It's been on my mind for a while. I'm trying to get those thoughts out and... Rather than me shoot a text to somebody, because a text is cool too, because they can screenshot it, save it, heart it. But to have a visual, you know, what if something happened to me? What if, you know, what if something happens or whatever to anybody within that situation, and you want to play that back? You know, some moments you can't like really relive, and that's when you can relive. You can relive watching that video. So I try to get them thank yous out um, when I can. One good reason why I do it now when it's in my mind is because. The first thank you I did was for a guy named Russell, um, who was like a big brother to me. I don't have a big brother, right? But he was like a big brother to me. And I was going to do one for my uncle, who was like a father figure to me. And my uncle passed before I can do it. I kept saying, I'm going to do it, 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 I'm going to do it. Never did it. He passed, and I feel like, damn. Even though we had talks, and we always talked to each other, and I always expressed how how uh, important he was to my life and how much um, I loved everything he, he, he's done for me, everything he taught me whether it be vicariously through him with his, things he's done in his past and his life, and I'll make them choices, or whether it be just how I see him maneuver through certain things, whether it be women, whether it be in the streets, whether it be a fight, whether it be an argument, just how smooth and authentic and how, how uh, he was able to maneuver in certain situations. I always applauded that, and I looked up to that. And I wasn't able to do that because he passed away, and I was so hurt when he passed away. I ended up doing a video afterwards, and I did one for him, so that was cool, but I just wish that he could have seen it, you know, in, in in HD and you know with my content, how it's how it's grown and um, the quality. I wish he could have seen it because when I talk about people, what I'm finding is, um, I did one for, uh, I can't think of his name right now. Damn, oh Karma Casanova. I did something for Karma Casanova, not for him, but I talked about it one time before I met him. Didn't know him from nothing. I talked about it one time. Just means knowing his story. He had done ten years. He came home. He was on a ball with the music and just doing different things. I'm like, yo, he got motion. And I remember that video kind of went up. I remember him sharing it. And then when I finally did meet him months down the line, he hit me up. I was like, yo, I be showing this video to girls and all this other stuff. Da, 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 da. 
And I was like, hmm, all right, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? Because here it is. I just said something to say something. I wasn't saying that for him to do that. I wasn't saying that for him to go around showing people. But he's telling me, like, yo, that meant a lot to me that I saved it somehow or whatever. You know, I got it here where I can pull it up when I'm around some women and be like, yo, look what he said about me. Look at, you know, that's dope. So I, knowing how powerful these words are that I'm saying, how uh, how much people are looking at the things I'm saying, uh, I try to you know be authentic as possible, and I like to do it when I can. So when it's in my mind, I do it. I don't do it for a, a thank you or you know for, to get people teared up or to make people you know feel away about me. I do it because it's really on my chest and I want to get it off. So um, I wasn't I wasn't planning on that being that long. Sorry, I didn't even get to the damn <laughs> to the damn podcast yet. Well, without further ado, let me. Start the podcast off with some music, I guess. Uh, let's get it. My check, my check, my check, my check, my check, my check. One massive podcast. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Hey, baby. You're driving me crazy. Uh-huh. I'm so proud, baby. Your lady. I sing about... Oh, what you know about this song, man? Why not? Okay. Okay. I got you, baby, that's all I'm for. And I love you. love. Uh, why? I place no one above. I don't want you to love. I love you. Hey, 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 hey. No matter what, baby. I love the way you love. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. 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 Mic check, mic check, Water Masters podcast. Let's get it. Second verse. Uh huh, I hear you. I got control of you, baby. Hey, hey, hey. I'm the greatest. I like that part, man. Hold up. Run that back a little bit. Uh, 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 uh. My check, my check. I ain't gonna lie, I like that part, man. Like, that part is my favorite part, man. I, I, I like this song in general, but you know, I, I, I've i been 30 since I was 12, so let's, let's start there, right? <laughs> No matter what. I love I love Oh, 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 Let's go ahead and mute that right quick. All right. I was looking for something to talk about later, but it was fine. Look, man, my check, my check. One Masters podcast, just made of course. I'm back with another episode, man. And uh, yo, I want to start with this, man. Look, so I had the um pleasure of uh hosting, right? So I've been doing a lot of not a lot, but I've been doing some hostings in the past uh year and some change. And I'll be honest with you, man. It, it's a it's an experience, man. It's an experience because you know, hosting is really, you know. People think of it as, you know, you're just speaking, and but you're really controlling the crowd. You know, you you are setting the tone, setting the mood. You're going subject to subject. You're going through a itinerary if there is one. Um, and you still have to kind of work around timing and, and making sure everything goes scheduled, still be entertaining, still mix and mingle with the people, be funny, uh, knowing to be serious, emotional, intelligent, when to dumb it down. It's a lot that go into hosting. I'm not going to lie. That is not my favorite thing to do, right? But shout out to my guy, Carlton T. Clay, man. 
Um, if you remember him from doing Fire Nights, he's done so many things, but just in my platform wise, we did Fire Nights together. We had that podcast for about two, two, two years and some change. And don't get me wrong, it's not ended per se, but we don't do it as often, but we can always start back up here and there. Um, we probably do an episode once a year just to kind of keep the ball rolling, but we did Fire Nights, had a bunch of episodes, a very great run, had some radio time, radio play, magazines. We had we did some some phenomenal um, uh, 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 actors and just famous people um far as interview wise goes but you know he is more known for his uh artistic side uh being a director a film producer a writer you know um things of of sorts and um so he had his 20th year anniversary for victory productions network vpn which is his uh production company and uh he started in 03 obviously 20 years right and man I want to say thank you, Carlton. Thank you for uh, a lot. Well, thank you to me at first for hosting. I don't. I don't think I come up as a host. I know I host my own podcast. I know I got my own thing going here, but it's just me here right now. It's, I mean, I can do a, a room. You know, I can do a little room, a little small room. Uh, but it's just me here right now. So you know, to be entertaining in front of a bunch of people, for you to think of me that way, to be able, or for you to think that I'm capable of that, definitely shout to you, man. Um, so he asked me last year. Let's start there. <laughs> let's start. Hold up. Let's start there. Hold up. Let's start with Carlton asking me a year ago about hosting his VPN celebration dinner this year, like t- like this year, yesterday. I'm not gonna lie. When he said it. I said yes because it's my man. It's Carlton. You ask me something, you know. I, I'm not that type of friend. You know, if I can come through, I'm coming through. And. I really didn't know if he was going to go through it. That's a year in advance. Like, we black, bro. Like, like <laughs> We black, right? When people say they're going to do something, it's like a year in advance. You're just like, you're lying. You know? You're like, lying, man. Like, like, come on. Like, we, we, we ain't, you know, that, that ain't how we wired. I just said, yeah, like, all right, cool. I hadn't heard nothing about it for a while. So, really didn't think it was even going to go down. But me knowing Carlton, I should have known. He's very, uh particular in, in how he set his, his things up and in and, and, and detail and how he uh, structures his events and anything he's a part of. So I really should have known. But I thought he would be too busy because he's like one of the busiest people. You think I'm busy? Carlton is busy. You know, he's always he's always filming, shooting movies, shooting shows, uh, doing his own thing, VPN mag, filming in North Carolina, filming in California, come back to Augusta, going to Atlanta, going to a war show, filming this, filming that. It was always a bunch of things he was doing, so I kind of think it was gonna happen. But anyway, it happened, right? So uh, I want to say, man, shout out to him, man. Let's let's start there. I want to take it off of me for a minute. You know, uh, twenty years of anything, man. That is that is beyond honorable, man. Twenty years of anything. You know, I'm thirty three right now, and I can't even think of anything consistent I've done for twenty years besides. I don't know. I can't think of nothing. Honestly, I was trying to be funny, but I couldn't think of nothing to be funny about. But yeah, you know, I I, I just can't think of anything that I consistently twenty. I mean, being a brother, of course, being a being a son, you know, cool. That's the only. Thing. But that's that's a that's a that's that's given, you know, like something you choose to do, and you just stick with it for a dub, like twenty years. To put in perspective, uh, I think about myself, right? So I've been doing podcasts since 2016, which would make it uh, seven years for me, right? So this is, I'm close, right? I'm close to half of what he's done. Then I think about where I worked at, and I, I've been there for, in, in April, going on 10 years, and I've been pretty consistent and good at that. And that's, a, I need that to survive. So that's like something, nobody choosing to work, like you have to work, right? So even I put it in that perspective, I can't think of too many things that I've done for 20 years, being consistent, dedicated, a dub, like 20. To put it in perspective even more, think about 20 years, what it means. Like people, when people take a life, they're given 20 to 25 years. That's a life sentence. So you think about 20 years and what it's synonymous with, it's synonymous with life. 20 years is synonymous with life, like meaning He's and, he, we're, and don't get me wrong, he's he's not super old than me. Like he's in his thirties, but like he has twenty years, he has a life 
like in, 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 when you put it in perspective, right? He has been consistent for a lifetime at something. Like, like come on, man, clap it up for my guy. Like, that's crazy. That's a in, that 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 chill. chill. That, that's an insane stat. Twenty years. You know, you know. I, I'll be honest. I'm not a fake person. I'll be honest. Like, uh, the celebration dinner and stuff like that. I, I'm not big on like doing like big things like that, right? And of course, I'm one of the hosts, and I'm gonna support my man because my man. But you got your preservation or something like. Oh. And I'm walking around, I'm looking at him, still like, you know, you still like, you're not thinking about it at the time. You're like, I'm here, but you know, we'll rock out. What are we going to do? And as the show went on, mind you, some of these things I'm seeing it firsthand. I'm hosting, but I'm seeing it firsthand. I'll get to, the, I'll get into hosting later, but I'm seeing it firsthand. And we watched some videos. He had a video of going from like the history of 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 VPN from when he first started, 03, 04, 05, to 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 now. And you watching that progression, like. You watching the freaking I'm about to curse. You watching uh, the evolution of, of 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 the quality of content, like the quality, like we talking about plays being being like plays with with loud audio or low audio, and and you not be able to 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 see who's who if you're not up close. Like the quality ain't really that crisp. You know what I'm saying? The writing is cool. It's not crisp. You know, it's room for improvement, a lot of things, but it's passion there, it's dedication there, right? You go on to the next thing, and it's like, I right, see the quality go up a little bit. You know, you see the writing get a little better. You see the acting getting a little better. So now he ain't got to go pick anybody he want. He's getting real people that's acting and that's and that's taking the craft seriously. Then you go four more years ahead, and you're like, oh, okay, okay. The audio getting a little better, you know what I'm saying? The visuals getting a little better. All right, but we still in this kind of the same... Uh, type of, uh, uh, of of content as far as the writing goes, then you go four more years in advance, you're like, oh, sh- people taking their clothes off a little bit was kind of secular. All right, Carl, you know what I'm saying? Like, you start to see that 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 growth in just penmanship, that growth in, in uh, the vision for the type of content you're putting out. And you're starting to watch that. You're like, damn, okay, you're getting a little better and better. Mind you, we only laid three phases in. We ain't even done the phase four and five of, of, of the four four years here and the four years there. Then you go forward and you see, okay, cool. You start talking about movies and 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 and, and branching out to out, out of state. We're getting out of state actors in, in the Carolinas and the, the the Charlottes and things of that nature. And again, the visual moves up. All right, you know, cool, cool. And then you get to that, that like, I'm, not, I'm saying final because of the video, which we'll get into in a minute. I'm saying final because of the video. I'm not writing him off and telling him he's done. No, I'm not doing that. But you get into the very ending of that visual that he posted, that he, that he played at the uh, event, celebration dinner. And you get into that and you see, like, the evolution at its, at its, at its peak, so to speak. Visual, dope. Uh, uh, acting, crisp. Writing, crisp. Vision, crisp. Multiple scenes. I mean, multiple angles. Like you getting a full fledged. Fi- let's not let's let's not forget him. You know, paying out of pocket for however many long years, and not being able to pay actors for however many long years, and then getting calls from Maverick and 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 Tubi, and like being able to put the films on these on these big platforms because he getting he's getting. Uh, pay for his movies like to see that evolution we talking 20 fucking years man like 20 years bro it's a long time so as I sit there and I watch and I'm like damn you know it kind of changed my opinion whether this was like something that was like super super crazy to celebrate because you hear it you hear it 20 years cool you just might do life sentence cool but you think about it, it's a life sentence like it's a life but if you think about it in perspective of what you've done and what you have done for that time, that time span, what you what you could have done and whatever. And I think of the fact that I've been doing things for a long time. I've been podcasting for a while. I've been working at where I work at for a while. I've been a, a father for a while. My daughter's only 11. I only worked where I worked at for almost 10 years. I've only podcasted for seven years. Like, it ain't even half of that. So to put it in perspective for a person like me, I was like, damn, that is a lot for somebody who's not even... 10, 12 years older than me, you know, like that's, that's a big deal. So definitely shout out to him for 20 years of anything, man, is, 
it's, it's, it's nothing to, to just shrug your shoulders at and, and, and act like it ain't nothing. 20 years is a long time. 20 years of, of, of commitment, 20 years of dedication, 20 years of trial and error, 20 years of learning, 20 years of failure, 20 years of wins, 20 years of losses, like 20 years of, of, of writing, 20 years of relationships, 20 years of networking, 20 years of traveling, 20 years of feeling like, like, do I want to do this? And, and, and still being like, yes, I do, like, and, and doing it and getting better. That's, that's 20 years of a lot of different things. 20 years of growth, 20 years of evolution, 20 years of different versions of yourself. You know what I'm saying? 20 years of fallouts, 20 years of new relationships. It's, if you think of 20 years and you think about all that can happen within that time, that is insane. That is insane. So definitely, man, shout out to him for 20 years of anything, man. One more time, man. Shout out to my guy, man. Shout out to Carl you know, 20 years is crazy. Um, I did win the bet. He did cry. Yo, Carl, I had to, I had to say it, you know. But 20 years, bro. 20 years. I think if you do 20 years of anything, you should cry. 20 years of marriage, 20 years of of, of being clean of, of drugs. I shouldn't have took it there. I'm sorry. I know that was that was a little much. I, I shouldn't have took it that far. But but 20 years of anything is a big deal. 20 years of, of, of working on a job and you retire. 20 years of going to doing jail time. You know, 20 years of anything should all, always be celebrated and be um talked about because it's not only 20 years of whatever we're saying it is, it's 20 years of that plus whatever went into them 20 years. 20 years is is real tumultuous, you know what I'm saying? That could be a that could be 20 tumultuous years. Yo, first of all, shout out to me for using these big words, man. Like, let's clap it up for myself real quick. Clap it up for me for having a good vocabulary. All right. We're gonna start right there. And 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 you ain't heard tumultuous from a black man since Walt Frazier. Let's <laughs> let's start there, all right? So shout out to Cotton Clay, man. And uh, his 20 years. And I'm not going to lie. Anybody watching this that's just, that's doing something, that's dedicated to something, that has something that you know they care about and and, and wholeheartedly uh, uh, is, is, are, is invested in, I wish you 20 years, man. Like, I I wish, I wish 20 years of greatness or 20 years of dedication, commitment to something to anybody watching this. Shout out to Carl Clay for achieving that before he's even 40 years old. Because sometimes people don't find... People don't even find what they're good at or what, what they value or what their passion is until they're in their 20s or 30s sometimes, depending on who you are. Sometimes 40. Like, so to find that early on and, and, and just keep that commitment, dedication um, to, to, to a dream, to a passion, and to be able to uh, start from where he started from and take it to where he took it, that is crazy. If anybody watching, by the way, you know, my favorite uh, content from Carlton is, is anything that I'm in. So I got two seasons of The Main Way. You go to uh, VPN uh, website. I'll put it in the, in the description. And uh, I got two seasons of The Main Way, right? I got time. So let's talk about it, man. It, when, I, um, when I was uh, talking about, uh, when, I was, when I was hosting, one of my points was, uh, the amount of respect I have for people that act, right? The reason being because you you watch a movie, you see a movie, you're like, oh, that's trash. I used to always say stuff is trash. Ah, that's trash. I would say anybody's art is trash if I didn't like it, if it didn't appeal to me. I would, it was trash, right? And you do that until you step in somebody's field. You step in somebody else's arena, somebody else's world. And I am calling and asked me one time, like, hey, can you come do a scene for me? My first scene was my shirt off. Let's start there because I am not muscular at all. I'm not muscular at all, all right? Am I handsome? All right, you know, you're going to be reasonable here. I'm all right. I'm decent. You know, I'm a good 7, you know, 7.5, you know. But, but I said, all right, cool. I did that. There was no lines, really. Then the next one I had, I had about two, three lines, four lines, five lines. I think I did a great job there. I took it serious, but it was I was shy. I was timid because I'm around actors. I'm in their world. I don't act. They act. I don't want to mess up and waste somebody's time, so I'm kind of like out my element, right? And then he hit me and said, yo, I'm going to get your own show. Once again, black people. I'm like, all right, cool, let's do it. I ain't thinking really going to do it. He sent me a script one day. I'm like, all right, bet, bet. Let's, let's rock out. I ain't thinking we're really going to rock out. He said a date for start filming. I'm like, all right, bet, bet. Let's film. And he was dead ass about filming. I'm like, all right, shit, I ain't read these the lines. And I didn't take season one serious like I should have took it. I wasn't dedicated, wasn't committed, 
I just kind of thought I can show up like I've done previously because everything was so last minute before, and I was filling in that I could. I thought I can do it that way. Boy, was I wrong, right? I sat back and I watched him, man. Like I supported it. people, and oh yeah, I supported it. I, and I definitely appreciate y'all. Nobody said you horrible actor, but I watched it and said, "Ugh, I was disgusted." You know, we live in a ratchet ass, I was, disgusting small town. I was disgusted, right? Shout out to Slim for the drop. I was disgusted myself. I said, "Okay," he said, "We're gonna do a season two. I bet COVID happened. A lot of things happened. So season two was a long. I gained about twenty pounds." <laughs> Hey, I'm probably like 170 in season one. I'm like 200 in season two. But anyway, um, anyway, I took season two super serious, right? Try to learn my lines. I acted it out. I had to read through it. My, my daughter read through it. My sister, I wanted to read through it. And I really wanted to engulf myself into what this character was going to be. And I feel like I did a better job season two. But I say that to say, you know, it, it, it gave me an appreciation for uh, actors and actresses because... Here I am for years and years calling people stuff trash and they work trash and you don't know what they putting into the work they doing. You don't know. Like, I'm calling something trash. Meanwhile, somebody done stayed up hours upon hours upon hours studying for this line, studying for this role, uh, trying to get in the character, doing certain things to get in the character, whether it be, you know, engulfing themselves into being engulfing this. I'm dead with these words anymore. But engulfing itself into, you know, whatever the character may be, whether it be a crackhead. Why I keep going to crack? I don't know. Why I keep being a crackhead? Whether it be a, a mother, a bad mother, a pastor, a preacher, you know, a drug dealer, and you the furthest thing from street. Like, and, and, and people being able to engulf themselves into those lanes, into that role, into those characters. And I was for years just saying trash, 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 trash until I had to do it. And I was like, oh, trash, 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 trash to myself. And so I developed an appreciation for art in, in general, not just actors, actors and actresses. I did, though, for them, but the art in general. So, like, I don't call movies trash. I, I might say the writing could be a little better. Can I write a movie? No, but I'm not going to call it trash. I try to critique at a different level. And all that's due to Carlton Clay. So shout out to him once again. Um... 20 years of teaching people things, 20 years of being a first, pause, whatever you want, but being a first people, like, that was my first shot at acting. I interviewed people on the red carpet during that event. That was a lot of their first time acting. So you're giving people first time acting, they going on and do big things. You're giving people the spotlight. You're giving people uh, a, 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 a different outlook on themselves and their talents. You're pulling talents out of people. I would have never said I could act. I can't act per se, you know, but I, I tell you speaking, I got some acting credits. So shout out to Colin Clay once again. Let's start there. Um, shout out to Colin Clay, man. Shout out to Colin Clay. Uh, another thing was, you know, the 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 hosting. I have a a a, a very very uh, newfound respect for anybody who hosts things. One thing I can say I learned uh, during this hosting is that you know. With all due respect, it's no way Will Smith would have gotten on that stage and slapped me and I did nothing. I'm sorry. Like, I, I, I would have looked for any reason to get off that stage. I was nervous up there. Uh, and I don't get nervous too crazy, but I was like, please, somebody come up here and try me so I can whoop some ass just so I can get sit down. I'm playing. But in all seriousness, it was, it was, it was, it was nervousness there. Um, you don't know if the crowd going to laugh. Uh, you know, you might look at that one person that's not laughing. They're just like this. That throws you off a little bit. Like, if the joke funny, you hear laughs, but you're like, damn, this person's not laughing. What's going on? Like... Bro, you, you, you good, you know? So it's like a lot of that going on, um, pacing yourself, timing, uh, knowing when it's joking is, is going to be, if the joke is going to be perceived well. It's a lot that go into hosting um, an event, an award show, especially something as important and as serious as the 20-year anniversary. So uh, definitely, definitely uh, clap it up for myself. But, you know, and on that, I had a co-host, uh, Ms. Renetta DeBose. Uh, she's from the news station. Uh, top-notch professional. Um, Try to get on podcast a few times. She didn't answer me back, but it's all good. But, you know, um, definitely got a lot of respect for her and her craft. I thought it was great to be up there with a news anchor. Like, my my media, how I, how I mediate through my media, you know, um, it's different. You know, it's a little different um, than what I might be used to. Uh, I'm a different form of media. And her being on, you know, the news station, uh, uh, you know, a, a big... Um, station that's backed by a bunch of funds and things like that. Um, I always try to pick up what I can learn. I think the dopest thing about me uh, doing a red carpet and me hosting with her was that 
she she said something to me and I I I don't take it uh I don't take it lightly. She said uh I asked her if she wanna step in and do any kind of red carpet interview and she was like, hey look, I'm loving your line of questioning and and, and what you're doing is great. You got it. I don't mess your flow up. <laughs> Meant a lot a little bit. At the time, I was like, oh, you know, I'm really want, I really just wanted you to, you know, kind of step in so I could step off for a second. But in, in, in retrospect, I thought about it I'm like, damn, this is a news anchor. She's on the news. as a, She's an anchor in the news. And she's telling me I'm doing a great job at media, at broadcasting right now. So, uh, man, definitely clap it up for her, too. You know, dope, dope co-host. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up. Yeah, man, shout out to her, man. So, um, yeah, man, and I don't want to spend too much time. This is me thinking about it. I mean, shout out to Carlton Clay once again. It's not a thank you to him per se, but thank you to him in our, in our reality. Um, me personally, I wouldn't even know a lot of the context I know. wouldn't have a lot of the uh, wherewithal I have. One thing I'm fine, I used to taught me how to do was to make a lot of something out of nothing. I learned that from Carlton Clay uh, hosting, hosting Fine Ice with him because uh, at one point we had a deal with two radio stations and... Uh, we had to give them two hours of material, two hours. And I think at one time we were recording twice a week, two hours, twice a week. And I'm still, and I'm still doing more than the master. He's still doing what he's doing. And it's times where um, we couldn't, like, it was nothing happening that week. We, it was all news. It wasn't like we was interviewing. So we had to, you know, come up with different topics and different things to talk to people about and, and different, uh, have different takes on certain topics so that we can stretch the conversation to be two hours. And I learned a lot with media during that time period because I was able to uh, grow myself and him, him as well with conversation, with listening, with uh, giving feedback, with having a strong long take, with having short takes, sharing a microphone with multiple people. Like, so um, that taught me a lot. And I don't think I'd be where I'm at today if I didn't do fire night. That was like a boot camp for me to be better at more than a master's, I feel. So once again, shout out to Carlton Clay, man. You're gonna keep shouting him out, man. He's just a, a great person. Um, so I did. I did. I want to talk about two things real quick before I get out of here. So I'm gonna try. I'm thinking. I want to try to do my thinking out loud a little differently now. I want to try to do it where I end with something from the book. If you know what this book is, right? If you know what the book is, I don't know if it's going. Hopefully, I'm messing nothing up because I got it on auto. But anyway, if you know what the book is, the book says the story of my life, and there's like little things in there that it asks your question. And you kind of post to write a diary. I'm not a writer. I don't write diaries, but I definitely speak on the microphone, so I don't mind telling that here. I want to end my thinking out loud from now on with an excerpt from here, and I and I talk about it that way, hopefully. And if I don't have nothing to do thinking out loud, I'll do multiple from here. If y'all cool with that, give me a thumbs up. And they're saying YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to joke more. I got to chill. It's that hour they gave us, man. The hour they gave us got me in a joke mood. I'm joking the whole podcast. I'm trying to be serious. I'm joking the whole podcast. But um, anyway, so I seen a meme, and I... It made me think of some people that I know and um wanted to talk about it for a second. Get y'all get y'all get your thoughts and opinions on it. It says, um, your triggers are your responsibility. It isn't the world's obligation to tiptoe around you. Jesus Christ. Yeah. All right. Um I, I, I when I seen that, I, I thought of a few things, right? First thing I thought of was Damn, that's accurate. And damn, that's right. There's so many people in this world that uh, you'll say something and, like, they think it's okay to get upset. They think it's okay to treat you a certain way. They think it's okay to uh, lash out because something you said is a trigger to them. That's a you problem. You know, if certain words or certain phrases or a way a person acts is triggering to you, that's a you problem. Like the best advice I can give somebody that 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 has that going on or that 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 fits far description wise is if it's a you problem and it's something that's triggering you, stay away from the triggers. So if it's a per- if the way a person acts triggers you, don't be around that person. If something someone says triggers you, don't speak to that person. If something someone does triggers you. Don't be around that person. If there's things that are tr- triggering you, don't be around those things until, right, until you can be around that person, those things, those actions, and be okay. Easier said than done, I'm pretty sure. But that's just the only answer. Bro. It's, it's no other answer. Like, 
the world doesn't have to tiptoe around you. It's it's so many self centered people in this world that think that because because of your experience with something, I now have to act this way. That is crazy. Now, if you're my person, you know whatever case may be, and you've been through this domestic violence. Of course, yeah. Me saying I knock you, it's, it's not funny. Now, if if you ain't been through nothing like that, we just playing, and that's cool because there's no triggers there. That's something different, right? But I'm talking about real, like just people you're speaking to in Pat. Like Miss Pat don't owe you nothing. Like she ain't got a tip to. She don't have to be around you, bro. <laughs> Sis, bro, whatever. Like Miss Miss Pat, just just mind her business. She says something and it happened to be a trigger for you. You got to deal with that. That ain't Miss Pat' problem. Pat don't know you. Y'all just work together. You know what I'm saying? Like, y'all just go to school together. Y'all just see each other in passing. Y'all don't know each other. And I think that's that's a, a, a big thing. So many people in this world, I hate when I talk like that. So many people in this world uh, feel like the world has to tiptoe around them because they just been through the most shit in the world. Newsflash, we all go through things. We all going through something. You know, um, every person, somebody watching this, I could smile all day. I could be going through something. I can't sit here and say, oh, man, you said the word light bill. It's pissing me off because my lights is out. Like, now I'm going to knock your lights out. I got to stop joking for real. No, but seriously, like, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> you can't You can't expect the world to tiptoe around things because you have problems. It don't work that way, man. Like. If you got problems and they and they you issues, you gotta handle that before you come outside. You know, if you know you can't fight, don't be places where they can't fight. All right, you know, if you know you can't joke, don't be laughing at people when they getting joked on. It, it, these are things you learn early on. This is like early uh, social skills. Same thing with triggers, man. Something triggering you, don't be around your triggers, unless you're trying to overcome them. And in that, in that, in that, in that, in that uh, facet then cool, but don't expect the world to tiptoe around it because you've been through it, because we all been through something. If that's the case, the world will be mute. If you just can't, if you're just going tiptoe around everything somebody got a problem with, you got an ego issue, don't be around niggas that's getting to it. All right? All right. As a man, you got an ego issue, you stay around some broke men, and so, or, or, or you, 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 you surround yourself with things that don't trigger you. And that's another thing with triggers. We got to really... I think, like, it's the difference between something that's triggering you and something that just, like, it's, 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 a, it's an insecurity, all right? Because a trigger is something like you've been through something and it's, tri- all right, cool. Sometimes people think they triggers are triggers and it's really just insecurity. But that's a different conversation I ain't trying to have right now. Triggers versus insecurity would be a good, be a good episode, be a good podcast topic, too. I might write some notes down on that and, and think about doing that. Triggers versus insecurity because a lot of times we think things are triggers. It's not triggers. And if it is triggers, it's just triggering your insecurity. But triggers are really things like you've been through something, you got some kind of, whether it's PTSD to it or whether it's just like something you've been through that's like it bothers you, it 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 it, it puts you in a certain um, mode, a defense mode, whatever the case may be, certain certain mood and words or phrases or certain things remind you of that and then you might lash out or you act a certain way. Those are triggers, but... Insecurity is just because you, you know, you know, you're not the man in your house or, you know, you're not the man in your relationship, you know, saying you don't, you don't drive or, uh, I don't know, you can't pay your bill, whatever that those are, those are insecurities. That's not triggers, you know? So, yeah. So I want to read a part of the book though, man. Let's get damn that over here. All right. So I'm going to end with this. Read part of the book. Let's see. All right. Describe your first job. No, let's not do that. Describe your first job. What was my first job? Like, so, you know, where I'm from, like, I had a few jobs, but I guess your first official job, I'll do two, two today. So, my first official job, um, I worked for summer, summer, summer youth, summer youth, you might as well say, in, in, in New York, and it's my last year there. And um, I worked at a old folks home, which you think, oh, you like old people, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, I love my grandparents. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's start there. <laughs> I love my grandparents. I happen to have an old soul. Um, that first job, I'm not going to lie, I hated it, right? I want to tell you something I learned in that first job, though. 
Uh, so the first task they gave me, the very first task, it was, uh, hey, it's a game room downstairs. You just go ahead and sweep and mop it. Cool. So I go down there. It's an older guy. I guess that's his real job. He's sweeping. All right, cool. He's like, you can just go ahead and mop. I said, all right, bet. I grab the mop. And I ring it out. You know, get ready. I'm going crazy mopping. Yo, I'm mopping like Hakeem was was mopping and um, coming to America. I'm just going crazy. I'm going wild, right? Um, he said, yo, my man, my man, my man, my man, my man, I said, what's up, bro? He was like, yo, pace yourself, man. Like, chill. You here till five, bro. Calm down. I was like, he right. I'm, 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 I'm 14, but I don't know what's going on. I'm 14, right? So, you know, I said to say, describe my first job. I still don't know what we were supposed to do. I'm assuming we just were janitors. The job description didn't say janitors, but I read the job description. I was kind of a nuisance at the job, though, because I started to be, have be a problem. I feel like every day they make me wash dishes and just do stuff. I'm like, yo, I ain't here to wash dishes and take out trash. Like, where does this get me in life? At that age, I thought that a job meant, like, you was doing something that was going to, like, help you further in life. And I was like, well, I do this shit at home, like, I take the trash out at home. I wash dishes at home. Like, I could stay home for that. You know, like, I couldn't because I want to get paid. But I could stay home for that, right? And as I think about it now, I realize that, no, it did help me out a lot. Like, and me being the way I was, I, I needed to be that way, so I could not be that way now. And what I was was a problem. I, I looked up the job description. I'm doing things that I need to do because that was easy money. If it's just... Thing I'm doing at home and I'm not getting paid for that home. What was the problem? What was the problem? It was no problem. I made it a problem because I didn't want to do the things. I made it a problem because I felt like I knew more than them. I made it a problem because I was young and thought I knew more than I really knew. And I didn't. Which brings me to another topic I want to talk about before I, get the next, before I get to the next question was, you know, a lot of times people, you know, we when we're a certain age or whatever, that's any age, whether you teenage, preteen, 21, 25, 26, we're gather. Regardless, um, I think sometimes people feel like when you bring up age, it's to uh, downplay them. They feel downplayed when you bring up age. I know I used to feel the same way. Oh, you on such and such, you don't know what's going on. You feel you feel downplayed, downsized. You just feel you feel disrespected. Like you feel like like nigga, I'm like you. What you mean? But you're really not like them, right? Somebody that's 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I'm 33. They're not like me. We're not the same. And I might, I'm not saying that I'm smarter than them or I'm better than them or that they're beneath me at all. But I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm wiser. I've seen a lot of things. And I've probably seen that person at that age, at that, wherever they at, if they're 20, if they're 19, and, 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 and whatever version of them they got right now, I have seen that version multiple times. I have seen some decisions they're going to make be made multiple times. So sometimes when you're saying that, oh, you're not, you're not, you wouldn't understand, or, you know, you're still young. It's not a diss, it's not a disrespect. It's me telling you, like, I've, I've seen some things, and you'll be okay. You got, you got like, some growing up to do. And there's nothing wrong with having growing up to do, man. Like, let's, like, let's, let's start there. Ain't nothing wrong with somebody telling you, you got to grow up a little bit. That's just the truth. And that's the problem with the world today. People like the truth. And I think I was like that being young, my first job. Like, I remember them telling me, like, hey, when you come in, you could just do X, Y, Z. I remember they stopped giving me work to do. They said, you just you just sit down there, you know, and, like, they stopped giving me work to do. I didn't understand. I'm like, why are they not making me work? You know, it's like, you're a problem. But I get it. Me being old now, I understand. Like, it's a headache, bro. Like, it's a summer job. You're here for a few weeks. Why are you causing problems? Like, why are you trying to revolt? You're here for a few weeks in the summertime. It's not even a, a permanent job. It's not a real job. We have a real agenda here. We got a grant. We're helping the city out. We're helping the youth out. And we want you to stay out of trouble. And I think about the trouble that I end up getting in anyway. And it's like, it could have been worse if I didn't have the job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So a lot of times we look at things um, as, in, in, a, in a present sense, a present form. Um, I just told our cartoon a little while ago, 20 years. If he looked at if he looked at what he did in the present form, he just got tired and stopped, or he didn't 
take time to learn and grow and, and build and rebuild and regroup and, and and get better and better and better at what he did, he wouldn't have got that 20 years. Like, it's a, it's, life is a marathon. It's not a race. Now, everything in life is like a marathon. And I think growth is a marathon as well. It's not a race. So sometimes when people say, you know, you're not old enough to understand or you wouldn't get it or they bring your age up, it's not always a diss. People take it as a diss because they want to grow up faster than what they need to grow up. And it's okay to not be as mature as someone who's 30 plus years old and you're 20, 21, 22. It's okay to to not be as wise as somebody who's 30 plus years old and you're 15, 16, 17. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's not a slight. The, 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 the reality of all that is, the reality of it is you don't know what you think you know sometimes at that age. Uh, there are a lot of people that are wiser than you at that age. The decisions and things you're going to face, people have faced multiple times and they know what they're talking about. And the reality, 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 uh, the reality of it is you don't. You haven't faced it. So sometimes it's just people helping you. It's a helping hand saying, hey, look, I've been through this. I've seen this before. Let me show you how you can, let me guide you through this. And it's as simple as that, man. It's not always, that age thing really pisses me off sometimes when people get upset about the age thing because they feel like you're, you're slighting them or you're disrespecting them or you're making them like seem like they not, that you're above them or that they're not, they not better or they not, they're not up to par. That ain't that. But being inexperienced is being inexperienced. It's no if and but, no way around it. If you're inexperienced somewhere, you're inexperienced there. Regardless of your age, right? But it just so happens sometimes that people that are inexperienced and in stuff that life is going to throw at you happen to be young because the, the more you live, the more things get thrown at you. That's just, <laughs> that's just the bottom line. So somebody that's 40 talking to a 20-year-old, yeah, I mean, damn. They had 40 years of things being thrown at them versus your 20. So, um, yeah, man. I'm going to start the next one. The next one, it says, uh, what did you do with your first paycheck? Why was this important to you? It's the last one we're going to do. Get, 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 get out of here. Oh, my first paycheck, what did I do with it? Why was it important to me? Boom, 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 boom. My first paycheck, I gave half of it to my mom. I remember like it was yesterday. I got my first paycheck was $277. And um, at, at the taxes, it was $277. And I gave, I'm sorry, not half. I gave my mom 120 I gave her 120 I kept the rest of it. And uh, I bought me some sneakers. Me and my friends went to uh, Manhattan. I bought some sneakers that I had been wanting for a while. And why was it important to me? Uh, any check, I, any any first check, any big check I've ever gotten, um, the first like 20 some years of my life, um, I always gave my mom half or a good portion of it. Whether it be an income tax check, whether it be a real check, um, my my school checks, uh, I always hit my mom off with some money uh, just because you know, it's your mom, for one. Um, she, she busted ass to do everything she could do for us. Um, and I just felt like it was a, it was the thing to do. Like, me and my mom always been super, super close. And we always been like, like, that's my that's my mom and I'm her son. But it's always been a, kind of like a partnership there for the most part. And she has that relationship with my sister as well. But, like, it's always been some kind of partnership there. So, like, when it comes to money and monetary stuff, like, I always felt like she always did anything she can do to to make sure we had what we had. So if uh and I I'm not a, I'm not I'm not a picky person. Like, I don't need a lot of stuff. So me getting my mom half was more important than me getting two pairs of shoes. You know what I'm saying? I didn't need two pairs. I just wanted to give my mom half. Anybody tell you when I was younger, whether it was working, whether it was doing stuff you should have been doing, anytime I did something to get some money, it was only to get stuff in the house. It was never like for me, like I need shoes or I want to wear this outfit or I want to have money in my pocket for this. It was always for the necessities. I've always been a, a necessity person. It is very uh, necessary. I have my soda. All my life has been necessary. When I did things, sometimes it was just to make money so I can go to Fred's and get me get me some soda for the house, or I can make sure some sandwich meat in the house, some bread in the house, some cereal in the house, um, tea bags so I can make tea in the house. Like it was never to 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 look like something or because the girls like 
bad boys or nothing like that. I, it's always for necessary reasons. So, um, but yeah, to answer the question though, uh, I gave my mom's half, and that was important to me just because um, you can't ever pay your mom for the stuff she 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 she's done for you, regardless regardless of the situation situation um, or the relationship you got with your mom, you only get one. So, if the relationship is bad, you know I definitely feel for you. Um, I, I don't wish that nobody. I wish I think anybody should experience a, a loving and healthy uh, relationship with their mom. If, if not, you know, I definitely feel for you because I can't think of too many things that's that spe- as special as that. Like, and my mom's like, we don't like we we don't we don't argue. <laughs> Me and mom don't argue, but you know, we, we might get irritated with each other. I show my irritation differently. She shows us differently, but we don't argue. We don't we don't. We don't bitter. We don't go. We don't bicker back and forth. We don't fight. Um, never have. Uh, we just feel our way and we, we be over it the next day. But we got a really really healthy loving relationship, and she always uh, 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 big me up, uh, lifted me up, um, made me feel like I was somebody. I was gonna be somebody, even when I when I felt like I was nothing. Uh, my mom always had this uh, you know idea of like yo, like she always had a way of. You know, lifting you up, building you up, and you can't, you can't, you can't pay for that. You know what I'm saying? You can't buy that. Um, that's genuine. That's real love. And, and my mom always did that, and she showed me she loved me. I never had to go into the world thinking like I'm not loved. I never had to. I never felt unsafe with her. Um, I never felt like, you know, if she was around, I had to watch out for this and watch out for that. Uh, you know, never, never. So uh, that's why you know anything I've ever had, if if, if I had to give her something of it. It was fine, fine me. And I know she would do the same if, and some. So, but it's always important to me to, you know, make sure mom was taken care of because we was all we, we was all we had, you know. And I'm not making this a, uh, you know, didn't have a dad or this, that type of story because I had a dad, you know. But at, at the same time, for a long time, uh, we was all we had. And so um, my, my immediate family would, would definitely tell you that we all close. My aunt, my cousin, like, we look each other like brother, sister. Even though we cousins, just like that because, we was all we had, and um, yeah. So my mom gave him my half of my check. Then the shoes that I bought, or the sneakers that I bought, it was just the Air Force Ones, the, the classics, you know what I'm saying? Uptowns, um, were all white and I mean all black. Back then, it, if you had black on, it didn't mean you could fight. It just meant you had all black. But I just wanted them because I never had them, and I was I had money, and I was like, yo, I never really been in a spot where I could just get something I wanted. So the first time I got a chance to just get something I wanted. I, I got it, you know, and that was it. I didn't go crazy buying a bunch of shoes and all like that. Um, I got them at a good deal, uh, and that's that's why, you know, I did. And the rest of the, I left, rest of the money I had, I, 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 I um, so I spent this. Sh- so in New York, I know Uptown's called like eighty five dollars now. So but in New York, um, people were like the st- they would steal from the trucks. So you steal from the from the street truck, whatever. And this what happened. The guy lived next to me was well connected with a lot of things. I ain't gonna say everything's gonna, but a lot of things, right? Definitely a lot of crime things. And he was, he had just so happened, like, yo, I got this shoe truck coming. Um, stop here a minute. You're gonna have a trunk full of shoes. You get at me today, cause I might run out. Tell you, tell your homeboy, but cool. We all went, we all went, we all went over there, got some shoes. I got the shoes from him, paid like forty dollars for them. So you know, if you, if you're gonna do a math breakdown, I said I had two seventy seven, right? I gave mine one twenty. So one hundred take away two seventy seven is one seventy seven. So what I had, what, 157, I guess you could say? So take 40 of that, you know, I had uh, bought the shoes. So now I got, what? Well, let's just say I got 140, 110 left. Um, for the next two weeks, I paid every two weeks, I just rationed out. So I took I took a certain amount of money, and then I rationed out for two weeks how, how, much, how much money I was going to spend per day. And that's how I did it. That's how I went to the next check. I didn't save none of it. Like my first shot, I didn't save none. <laughs> I didn't say none of it. But honestly, saving is hard when you when you when you poor. So um I probably could have saved some, but I didn't. And then uh that was that really. Like, so I just I just I spent all of it. That was that's how I spent it. Each day I, I bought Chinese food or pizza or something like that. Um and I lent out zero dollars. So shout out to me for escaping the black community. Let me hold twenty dollars, man. I ain't got it. I only could spend seven dollars a day, <laughs> and I already bought my pizza. But uh, yeah, man, that's nothing a lot, man. Shout out to y'all, man. Uh, shout out to Conclay. Twenty years of excellence. Twenty years of black excellence. Twenty years of dominance. Twenty years of 
of, of creating 20 years of headaches, 20 years of everything that, 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 that comes with uh, commitment and determination. So shout out to you. Um, shout out to everybody watching, anybody watching the podcast. Um, yeah, be out. Man. Be out more than the Masters podcast. Be out. I'm going to talk slow one day, I guarantee you. I don't know when, but I'm going to do it one day.